I'm coming, everybody. Just wait one second. Okay. Welcome to North Park Community Church. My name's Matt Loveday, and I'm walking on a tightrope. You can't see it, but I'm having to balance and gain control. And, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today for our lesson because it's all about control. You know, we've been talking this month about having self-control. And, and just like being on a tightrope, I have to make sure that I'm always in control or something bad could happen. I could fall way down there. Oh, got it. <laughs> and that's what this Bible story today is all about as we learn about control. And, and something that you can do to, to get help when you're losing control is hold on to something. Like, have you seen those tightrope walkers that that hold on to those big long poles. I think, oh yeah, here, okay. Oh, there. Oh yeah, that is, wow, that is easier. When you hold on to something, you can have more self-control. What are those things that we need to hold on to when we're trying to control things like maybe our temper when we get angry or when we're trying to make the right choice? What can we hold on to that can help us make the right choice and, and be in control of our choices? Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. So enjoy listening. Whoa, <laughs> got to keep holding on. <laughs> enjoy listening to today's story, and then I'll come back in a little bit, and we'll talk about it some more. But right now, I'm going to try to do a jump. Are you ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Yes! <laughs> I nailed it! I'll see you soon. Sign, a fork in the road Shaking my emotions Looking at my options Which way to go It's a moment of decision An opportunity To do what's right by you And what's best for me So maybe I will do Just what I know that I should do Even when it isn't really What I'm wanting to I know there is a way that I can honor you And so I'm gonna do just what I know that I should do So I'm gonna 
I'm Jacob. You ever think about what life was like before the remote control was invented? Just imagine, every time you wanted to change the channel, you had to actually get up, walk over to the TV, and change the channel dial. We'll be right back after these messages. Don't touch that dial. <sighs> I should appreciate you more. But we're not here to talk about remote controls. We're here to talk about self-control. Self-control is choosing to do what you should even when you don't want to. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had a remote control for ourselves? An actual self-control? <laughs> that way, if I was ever feeling bored or something, I could just, you know, change the channel. Like, all right, you varmint. You've met your match. I'm the fastest channel switcher on this side of the Colorado. Sure is lonely out in space. Oh, fall back. Picks his target. Pass! Sorry, Miss Ackerman. Dance party! I'm the Turquoise Avenger. I knight thee. <laughs> Can't stop dancing. Can't stop dancing. Things are getting out of hand. Scalpel. Whoa. Finally, I had to take the batteries out. <laughs> that was, that was trouble. In today's story, we'll find out that when you lose control, trouble is exactly what you'll get. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Proverbs, chapter 25, verse 28. Theo Brickman knew he had the perfect name. He had been building brick creations ever since he could wrap his chubby baby hand around a mega brick. Brick! As Theo grew older, he moved on to brick building kits, but soon his imagination raced ahead of any building kit or building instruction set you could ever buy. I want to build Jupiter. All of Narnia, a ginormous flying pizza. Theo even got a job at a brick building store so he could spend his days surrounded by bricks. So he was overjoyed when he found out that a brick building TV show called Brick Bosses was gonna be holding auditions in his town. I'll get on the show for sure. On the day of auditions, several dozen other people showed up along with Theo. He jostled up to the front for a good spot. <laughs> I bet not one of them can beat me. A tiny lady with iron gray hair eyed him sharply as she addressed the competitors. I am Althea Legoemi, and I shall be judging you on originality, technical skills, and overall conduct. There is a brick room if you need a snack or rest, but no food may be eaten here in the brick room. You have four hours to build anything you can imagine. Begin! Theo raced to the side of the room where racks and bins holding every kind of brick stood. Hey, you stepped on my foot. <laughs> you snooze, you lose. Theo shoveled bricks into his bin. I'll build a castle, one with 
turrets and towers and a wonderful moat filled with shiny brick water. Theo got right to work. Soon, the walls of his fortress began to rise. He designed decorative windows and lofty balconies. Ooh, I should build a dragon to attack my castle. As Theo snapped red and gold bricks together to form his dragon, another competitor looked over. <laughs> Is that supposed to be a horse? Can't you see I'm not done with it yet, you, you, you blockhead? As time ticked on, Theo realized he was hungry, so he decided to take a quick snack break. Just one minute. But in the break room, he discovered his favorite treat of all time. <gasps> Dill pickle and pizza potato chips. Theo downed one whole bag. <laughs> he desperately wanted another, but the clock was running down. I'll just sneak this back into the brick room with me. Theo finished his dragon between stuffing pizza chips in his mouth. He tried to hide the bag, but when he looked up, he noticed Althea spotting a trail of chip crumbs that he left behind. <laughs> she probably doesn't know that was me. With just a half hour to go, Theo's castle and dragon were nearly complete. I need a wall around the moat. Yeah, with a really cool pattern. So Theo began snapping together an elaborate wall. Ah! but the wall simply would not behave. Gotta treat this piece apart. Mm. Pry as he might, Theo could not separate mm. two small plates. Mm. Ah. Frustrated, Theo hurled the locked pieces across the room. They narrowly missed the head of Althea Lagoame, who was examining another competitor's project. She turned her head sharply to look in his direction. I don't think she saw it was me. As the final minutes ticked away, Theo fumbled to finish his wall. Time is up. Wheel your creations up to the judging stand. Theo glanced around as he wheeled his work table up to the front. <laughs> Mine's the best! But as Theo slid his table into position, it bumped over a crack in the floor. A big section of his perfect wall tilted and then crashed down. No! It was too late. Time was up, so Theo was not allowed to repair the wall. No fair! Theo sulked all the way through judging. When the names of the winners were announced, Theo's was not among them. What a waste of time. Theo stormed up to Althea. So, it was my castle wall, right? If that hadn't fallen, I would have won? It wasn't the castle wall, actually. It was your wall. What? Part of your score was conduct. How you acted and followed the guidelines and treated others throughout the audition. But I built the best creation. You do an excellent job of building without instructions but it's pretty hard to go through life without instructions. My favorite guide for life is the book of Proverbs. You mean in the Bible? Exactly. Proverbs 25, 28 says, a person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Oh. If your own wall was in good shape, I think you would have won today and caused a lot less trouble for yourself and the people around you. But that's not... <sighs> what if I do? Work on my self-control wall, I mean. Then you should definitely audition again next season. I think you'll have an excellent chance. Um, thank you. I think. Theo was deeply disappointed not to be chosen for this show, but as he was waiting for the bus to take him home, he downloaded a Bible app and tapped his way to Proverbs. Yep, maybe it was time for some life-building instructions. One of the wisest people ever, King Solomon, wrote this. A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. People used to live in cities with walls around them to protect themselves from their enemies. So, if there was ever a hole in the wall, it meant trouble. You may not have ever lived in a city with a wall, but you can imagine what it would be like 
if there was a hole in the wall of your home? Ma, there's rain coming through the hole again. And there's a tiger. Huh. Oh, tiger, Ma! Walls are there to protect us from harm. When we lose control, it's like those walls are broken through. And that can mean trouble. When you're not controlling yourself. Can't stop dancing! You're not paying attention to the things or people around you. And that's when things get broken. And when you or other people get hurt. Oh, fall back. Picks his target. Pass! Sorry, Ms. Ackerman. Oops. So, here's the one thing to remember today. When you lose control, it can cause trouble. But I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If you really wanna control yourself, you're gonna need some help. Here's the good news. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. That means when you put your trust in Jesus and follow Him, the Holy Spirit will be there to help you keep control. Because control is something everyone needs. It's okay. It's fixed now. Oops. Well, I reckon it ain't then. Time to ride off into the sunset. Partner. Come on, Bessie, let's go! Yeah! Thanks so much for joining us today. I hope you got a lot out of that story about self-control and realizing that when we don't have control, things can go wrong. So self-control is really important for us to learn. And you know what? Learning means we're going to make mistakes. So if you've made mistakes before, which I'm sure you have, I have too, you're going to fall down. But that's okay. God still loves you. The important thing to ask is, have I learned from my mistakes so that I can make better choices in the future? You know, it reminds me of what self-control is. Remember, this is what we've said self-control is. Choosing to do what you should, even when you don't want to. You know, you might not want to do something, but if it's what you should do, then showing self-control means you'll do what you're supposed to do. And that can be hard, but you can do it. I know you can. You just might need to hold on to something and trust that you can do the right thing. It also reminds me of our Bible verse. We've seen it already today, but can we say it together? It's found in the book of Proverbs, which is a book all about wisdom. And it's found in chapter 25 and verse 28. And this is what it says. Do you want to read it along with me? A person without self-control is like a city whose walls are broken through. Psalm 25 and verse 28. Well, we might not be a city, but we certainly want to still make wise choices. We don't want, you know, things like our anger or bad choices to break through into our lives. So I want you to know that this week ahead and always, I'm going to be praying for you, that you have self-control and that God helps you make the right choices. Can we spend a minute before we leave today? Because I want to pray for you, okay? Let's pray. God, I thank you that you are always with us, that you are someone that we can always hold on to in life to help us have self-control and to make the right choices. Would you be with us to give us wisdom in how to better make choices in our lives? Thank you, Jesus, that your love is always there for us, even when we make mistakes. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everybody. Well, it was so great to see you. We can't wait to have you join us again next time here at North Park for our services. 
Take care. Bye-bye. Oh!